welcome to Diagramming Infinitives and Infinitive Phrases. Uh, before I begin, a, a couple of you have asked about why this looks so dark. Uh, it's not done in a dark room. In fact, it's a well-lit room with plenty of sunlight and uh, <clears throat> ceiling lighting and everything. But the smart board projects light directly toward the camera so that uh, the camera adjusts by making everything around it dark. You have kind of the same effect if you were to try to take a picture of the sun, something like that. So, uh, but you don't have to see me anyhow as long as you can see the, the board. That's what's important. Okay, let's begin. Uh, just a reminder, infinitives are verbals formed by the word to followed by the present tense of the verb. Infinitives can be nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. Sometimes when an infinitive follows the verb, the to can be dropped. Sometimes when an infinitive follows a verb, the infinitive can have a subject. Okay? So most of the time it is to plus the verb. Occasionally the to can be dropped. Occasionally infinitives can have subjects. So the question becomes, how do you diagram infinitives. Actually, with adverbs and adjectives, it's pretty easy. They are modifiers, so the modifying infinitive goes below the word it modifies. So if there's a noun, pronoun, or verb being modified by an adjective or adverb, it's very simple. Uh, the two is on the diagonal, and the verb part of the infinitive is on the horizontal. If there is any uh, complements or anything like that. They just extend the horizontal and you follow the verb with the complements, with direct object, predicate adjective, predicate nominative, whatever. Okay. And it looks something like a prepositional phrase, though it's not one. You do have to watch out for that. But, you know, with one of the tricky things about infinitives in the first place was they reminded you of prepositional phrases, except was a verb following the two rather than a noun. Okay, let's look at a simple example. Here's one from a previous lesson that you might recall. Jesus is the one to call on. Okay, infinitive phrase, to call on, modifies one. In this case, one is predicate nominative, so is is the verb, Jesus is the subject. Complement is one, predicate nominative, so you have the diagonal, and then the modifies one, and then to call on modifies one. The to is on the diagonal, the verb call is on the horizontal, on modifies call. Okay. That would be how you would do it for adjectives or adverbs, for modifiers. Okay. Here's one a little trickier, but it's still an adverb. In this case, an adverb infinitive phrase, not just the infinitive. Jesus entered Jerusalem to fulfill prophecy. Okay, to fulfill prophecy is the infinitive phrase. Okay, entered is the verb. Jesus is the subject. Jerusalem is the direct object. Jesus entered what? Jerusalem. And then to fulfill prophecy is an adverb phrase modifying entered. Why did he enter? You know, for what purpose did he enter? Okay. To fulfill prophecy. So, again, the uh, diagonal going down from the word it modifies has the to fulfill hat is on the horizontal, and then prophecy is the direct object. So, you have the vertical line separating the verb from the direct object. And pretty much most modifiers, adjectives, and adverbs, this is how they're done. Okay, Ad, uh, infinitives acting as nouns are diagrammed differently. And if you remember when we did gerunds, gerunds were placed on a noun stand. Kind of looked like almost like an upside down Y. And we do the same thing with an infinitive that's acting as a noun. We place it on the same kind of noun stand. Remember, nouns are always on a horizontal. So we put the noun stand on the horizontal with the infinitive on the top of the noun stand. The uh, 
over the fulcrum of the noun stand, if you will, is the verb, and then we have the diagonal with uh, going up from there with the two. Uh, and this is true if you think about it, no matter where the infinitive or infinitive phrase is found, whether it's the subject, whether it's direct object, whether it's an indirect object, whether it's an object of preposition, whether it's an object complement, uh, whether it's in a positive, okay, it's diagrammed the same way. Okay, here's an example. You may remember this one, a fairly simple one from uh, previous lesson. To wish is not enough. Okay, is is the subject to wish, I mean, sorry, is is the verb, to wish is the subject. Okay. Uh, what is not enough to wish? Okay. So we put to wish on the noun stand with wish going on the horizontal and to on the diagonal. To, of course, is capitalized because it's the first word of the diagram. And then uh, in this sentence, enough, of course, is predicate adjective and not modifies is. So you can take a look at that for a second, but notice the infinitive on the noun stand. Uh, if the infinitive is a noun, that's how it's done. Okay, in this case, it is the subject. Okay, and this is the same regardless of the function of the noun in the sentence. So here's another sentence we had in Gethsemane. Jesus asked the Father to change his plans. Notice here that the infinitive phrase is the direct object of the main verb. And the infinitive to change also has a direct object, namely plans. Okay, Jesus asked what? to change his plans. Okay, so to change his plans is the direct object of the verb asked. Of course, the subject is Jesus. In Gethsemane, if you think about it, in Gethsemane really answers the question where it modifies, it doesn't modify Jesus, it modifies the verb. Okay, notice that the in is capitalized because it does begin the sentence that way. Um, but a lot of times adverb phrases uh, begin sentences. And then in this case, father is the indirect object. Remember, indirect objects receive the direct object, so he's the one, you know, receiving, uh, you know, the, uh, the question to, you know, the request to change. Okay, so, um, in this case we have father here as the indirect object, without modifying father, and then to change on the noun stand is in the direct object position. Notice plans is the direct object of change, so I guess you could say there are two direct objects, one direct object of the main verb and then direct object of the infinitive. And then of course his modifies plans. Um, you could make a case that father is the subject of the infinitive, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Look at it that way. Remember that sometimes a two is dropped after certain verbs. In case like this, the uh, infinitive is always a direct object. And so it's diagrammed the same way, except the two is put in parentheses to show that it is a two understood. The same way you put, uh, you put the you in parentheses in an imperative sentence. If I said come here, you would diagram that you come here you would be put in parentheses because it's you understood. So we do the same thing with the two. So in this sentence, you may recall, Simon of Cyrene helped carry the cross. The verb is helped. Simon is the subject of Cyrene, modifies Simon. If you were to write Simon of Cyrene all out, because you made a case that Simon of Cyrene was his full name, I would accept that. I, uh, you know, you could kind of do it either way. But then, helped what? Okay, direct object noun stand to carry. Only the two has been dropped, so we put the two in parentheses. And of course, cross is the direct object of carry. Carry what? Carry the cross. Okay, and that, of course, modifies cross. Okay, now, there are a few textbooks that do this differently and place an X where the two would go. I just mentioned that in case you come across it. It's less common in English. Uh, you do see it sometimes in other languages because um, 
most other languages, the infinitive is a single word. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's a single word. It's not a, a phrase like it is in English. It's not two plus another word. So uh, you do sometimes see that in other, uh, in some textbooks, but uh, we're not doing it that way. That's not the way your textbook does it. But if you do come across it that way, that's, that's all it means. Okay. One last thing you may recall about infinitives following certain verbs. Sometimes the infinitive has a subject. If that's the case, then the subject of the infinitive goes on a horizontal line extending to the left of the top of the diagonal. <coughs> Since subjects are always noun or pronouns, you want to keep them on a horizontal line. So you can see, normally, uh, if you have a subject of an infinitive, that infinitive is probably a direct object. Maybe you can come up with a sentence where it's not, but normally it is. Um, so, uh, Yoda could probably come up with a sentence <laughs> where it's something else, but uh, normally it's a direct object, and so it goes on the noun stand, you know, two plus the verb, whatever the verb is, and then the subject goes uh, to, the, to the left of the two. Okay, one last thing you may recall about infinitives following certain verbs is sometimes the infinitive has a subject. If that's the case, then the subject of the infinitive goes on a horizontal line, as I said. So here's what we had before. Okay, my parents wanted me to do my homework. Okay, wanted is the verb. Parents is the subject. My modifies parents. Wanted what? Wanted ice cream? No, wanted me to do my homework. Okay, so to do, and you know, on the noun stand, it's the direct object. Homework, do what? Homework, so that's the direct object of do. My modifies do, and then me is the subject. Okay, uh, it's not really uh, an indirect object here because I'm the one doing the homework. Okay, um, so that sentence with asking, you could kind of go either way because. Because the, uh, you know, ask the father to do something uh, really is functioning more like an indirect object because of other constructions and other other forms. But you know, you could make a case that that was also uh, the subject. But you know, in this case it definitely uh, it definitely is. Okay. So uh, that's what you would do if the subject was there. Uh, if the two is dropped, we still diagram the subject of the infinitive the same way. We just put the two in parentheses uh, because the two is understood. Remember this sentence, the Roman guards made him carry the cross. Okay, made is the subject, guards is the verb, the and Roman both modify guards. Direct object is the infinitive phrase to carry the cross, or the two is dropped, so we just have two in parentheses, carry and cross is the direct object of carry, the modifies carry. And then him, you know, goes out on the horizontal before the two uh, as the subject of the infinitive. So, same pattern, just with the two in parentheses. Uh, one other special case you might recall uh, that's a little different with infinitives because infinitives are two-part words. Uh, if you have a compound infinitive, Split it as any other kind of compound would be, but sometimes whether or not the word to is repeated makes a difference. Okay, he likes to ring doorbells and run away. That's kind of a naughty thing to do. I think when I was about eight years old that there were a few kids in my neighborhood that thought that was hilarious. Um, so, uh, likes is the verb, he is the subject, he likes what? He likes ice cream? No. He likes to ring doorbells and run away. Now, in this case, there's only one two. So we put the infinitive phrase on the noun stand and split it after the two. So it would look something like this. Here's the two, and then ring. Now, doorbells, in this case, just goes with ring. It doesn't go with run. It's not running doorbells. So it's just ring, doorbells, doorbells is the direct object of ring, and, and run goes on the dotted line, dotted line for the conjunction, and away, of course, modifies run. 
Okay, if you were to write the sentence a little differently, he likes to ring doorbells and to run away. In this case, since you have the two twos, you would split the uh, uh, direct object on the direct object line. So, uh, you know, right after the vertical line for direct object, you'd split the line there, and then the uh, top line would have two ring doorbells on the noun stand, because it is an infinitive. Doorbells, of course, the direct object of the infinitive, and to run away on another noun stand, because it's a, a separate infinitive phrase. Um, and then and, of course, on the dotted conjunction line. Somebody asked, well, which side of uh, the con uh, dotted conjunction line should you write the conjunction? And uh, frankly, to me, it doesn't make any difference. Probably depends on whether you're right-handed or left-handed. So you know, don't don't worry about that. As long as you have it, that's that's okay. Okay. Although it's not common in English, occasionally. Uh, and if, uh, infinitive can be an object of preposition. It's usually not because two is a preposition itself. But um, with gerunds, if you have a gerund as an uh, object of preposition, you can dispense with the noun stand. But because infinitives resemble prepositions and are diagrammed similarly, we still have to put the infinitive on a noun stand even when it is the object of a preposition. Here's a sentence uh, it's very similar to a sentence from your grammar book. Our flight from Paris was about to leave. Okay, was is the verb, flight is the subject. Our modifies flight, from Paris modifies flight. And then... Taylor Jane, please come to the main office. Taylor Jane, please come to the main office. <clears throat> I have no idea who that is, but anyway. Uh, and then about to leave is a prepositional phrase, to leave course, is the object of the preposition, so it does go on the preposition line, on a noun stand, and then two on the diagonal, leave on the horizontal. A uh, little bit messy, you do have to allow yourself enough room, but that's the way you do it. Again, in English, you don't have to do it a whole lot because we don't have a whole lot of occasion. Uh, in modern English, anyhow, where infinitives are the object of a preposition. In fact, usually it is with the preposition about. Okay, so, to review, infinitives or infinitive phrases acting as adjectives or adverbs are diagram-like prepositional phrases. Under the word they modify. The two is on the diagonal, the verb is on the horizontal. Any complements follow the, uh, the verb part in the usual way. Infinitives or infinitive phrases asking, acting as nouns are placed in a noun position on a noun stand, like most gerunds. The verb is on a horizontal on top of the stand, and the two is in its usual position uh, to the left on a diagonal. If the two is dropped in the infinitive or infinitive phrase, then the two is written in parentheses. It's, it's, it's two understood. If the infinitive or infinitive phrase has a subject that extends to the left of the infinitive, that subject extends to the left of the infinitive on a horizontal line. Okay. And then compound infinitives are split after the two if there's only one two, or they are diagrammed separately with the conjunction connecting them if all parts have a two. I think of Hamlet, what is it, to be or not to be? Yes, that would be diagrammed separately because there are two twos in that one. Okay. That's it for the lessons on diagramming infinitives. Good night and God bless. A little extra credit question for the homework. Who always said that on his television show at the end? Good night and God bless.